welcome to For the Quantum Grammar Shoot Podcast, the only podcast of its kind on the internet that I'm aware of. I'm your host, Colin Jason Knight from Matthew Colin Glass. You may call me Jason, unless you are of the Spanish-speaking variety, in which case you will probably feel the urge to call me Matthew rather than Jason. I'm okay with that. It gave me a little problem at first, you know, I was like, well, why don't they, I asked them to call me Jason, why don't they call me Jason, why are they calling me Matthew? But for some reason, the Spanish folks want to call me Matthew, so that's fine, I'm alright with it. In any case, I'm not sure which uh, edition of the podcast this is, I've done a lot, a lot of podcasts. And this one I'm going to talk about what it means to trespass. Because I, I heard something the other day that blew my mind. As many of you that are longtime viewers of mine know, I'm a fan of mixed martial arts. I love the combat arts. I have a history. I used to box. I used to do some jujitsu, Muay Thai, um, a little bit of wrestling things like that at Krav Maga and I, I just love the combat sports not much of a team player as far as that stuff goes don't really like to watch football or baseball or basketball or nothing like that but I love martial arts not so much when I say boxing not so much the modern boxing not a big fan of that I stopped watching boxing after Roy Jones Jr. won the heavyweight championship from John Ruiz Although I do watch some of the bigger boxing matches now. I'm not a big fan of it now. In any case, I don't know why I felt the need to clarify that. It has nothing to do with grammar. So I'm going to talk about his trespassing. And I heard uh, the former UFC heavyweight champion Frank Mir, who was actually, I think, the youngest UFC heavyweight champion, Frank Mir talking about home invasions. Where if someone breaks into your home and you shoot them, like, if, if there's a trespasser who literally breaks into your home in the middle of the night, they're inside your home, they have busted down the door, and you shoot them, that you can be held liable for murder. Because what it, what is the, the logic? The logic that they're using is, oh, you value the goods in your home more than you value the trespasser's life? Well, when I heard that, I knew, I knew that I had to do a podcast about it. That is one of the most, I mean, I can't even put it into words. It's, it's getting me up in my feelings right now. It's the biggest load of bullshit I've ever heard. Outside of the stuff that Russell J. Gould says, I mean, this is like one of the biggest loads of bullshit I've ever heard. For real. If someone comes into my home in the middle of the night, they break in, they're not invited. Even if it's in the middle of the day and they're not invited, they're taking their life in their hands. Has nothing to do with the value of the goods. It has to do with trespassing. It has to do with violation. It has to do with rape. That that would be like saying to a rape victim who killed their attacker, say, Uh, And this is going to be graphic. Say uh, a male in a parking lot at Burlington at uh, 10 o'clock at night in between a bunch of cars grabs a young girl and proceeds to begin raping her and is raping her and her, by the grace of the cosmos actually finds like a knife maybe in his pocket or something and begin and cuts his throat and kills him. And then she then would be held liable for his murder and the logic behind that would be well you know you value the sanctity of your body over his life. Why did you have to kill him? You didn't have to kill him. You could have just pressed charges against him and he could have went to jail. How ridiculous does that sound? How freaking ridiculous does that sound? 
I'm telling you what, folks, friends and neighbors, I am neither left nor right. I don't buy into that Hegelian dialectic bullcrap of the political system, conservative, liberal, libertarian, whatever it is. I don't buy into any of that propaganda. What I do buy into are the three principles that I teach in correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, the balance of the honor and the grace, the position of peace and neutrality, the maintenance of rule one, rule equal. Once those principles, those terms and conditions have been violated, if you violate those by breaking into my house in the middle of the night, those terms and conditions are off the table. Those terms and conditions are no longer available to you. There is no going back. You've broken into my house. Now you're about to forfeit your life at the very least. Okay? That's just the way it goes. You're a trespasser. The same thing goes for bureaucratic trespass. If someone is trying to steal value from my biosphere, and I mean steal, as in thieve, as in take something that is not theirs by whether it's subterfuge or by force, then I will do what I have to do uh, to stop them from, from creating damage to my vessel construct. And normally that would mean using correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar in a document, contract, postal vessel court venue, creating a federal postal court. Keep in mind, I said a federal postal court. I didn't say the federal postal court. I'm not talking about what Russell J. Gould and David Wynn Miller had going on. I'm not talking about that at all. I'm talking about my federal postal court. And for closure on that, you have to know what federal means. Okay? So, that I would use correct sentence structure for that. But a trespass in the middle of the night in a household... It's, yeah. If you're going to do that, if you have the audacity to do that, then... I guess you have no problem moving on to the great beyond. You have no problem dying if you want to do that to somebody's house, uh, domicile. You want to invade the sanctity of their household. A place where that's supposed to be safe for those people who live there. Whether it's children, you know, mothers, daughters, sisters, cousins, friends, whomever has been invited there or is living there, that's a place to feel safe. And if you trespass and invade maliciously that safety, well, then you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. And people, you know, I know people probably think that I'm a little overzealous about my comment sections, whether it's on TikTok or YouTube you know, with the way, you know, following terms and conditions, but I, I treat that the same way. The same way. It's my vessel, okay, that you're coming on board with your comments. It's just like you walking into my house. You're not going to talk any which way you want when you're invited into my house. There are terms and conditions. You're, you're not going to wear your muddy shoes inside my house and track mud all over the place. Because if you do that, you're going to get thrown out on your head onto the concrete and probably get beat with your shoes. All right? So I think of the comments field the same way. And people, I know this is a foreign concept, especially to the younger generation. Because there is such a perceived, perceived by me, sense of entitlement in this younger generation, this internet generation, this social media generation, where they feel like they just, you know, create a nom de guerre username, a username that has no relation to their correct name or their real name, and then they just say whatever they want to say. You know, they get the keyboard warrior thing. They just troll or say the nastiest things or the most presumptuous things. They think they can go on any YouTube comments field and do this. I try and press upon them that, no, you can't do that here on my YouTube channel or my TikTok. I ask that you be respectful or to use, you know, correct sentence structure terms from my dictionary, the balance of the honor and the grace. Be polite. 
observe etiquette. Don't tell people what they should or shouldn't do. Like I get people, like if I if I uh, criticize someone or I address a question um, in an aggressive manner, sure enough, someone will comment. At least one person will comment and say, Jason, you shouldn't get riled up about this, blah, blah, telling me what I should or shouldn't do. That is like, why? What makes you think that you know best, you know, what's best for me? I would never do that to somebody else. I would never tell someone what they should or shouldn't do. That is the most presumptuous, arrogant shit that anybody can do, I think. But as I'm finding out, I'm a lot different than most of you out there, I think. Because I find that most YouTube commenters participate with the, well, you should do this, or you shouldn't do that, or we should do this and that. And that's why most of the YouTube commenters and most of the YouTube audience will not ever in their lifetime learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Because that is a huge psychological hurdle to overcome. The psychological hurdle of worrying about your own damn self and not telling other people what they should or shouldn't do. The most hilarious stuff that I hear is when people tell me what I should or shouldn't do with my YouTube channel as if they have a YouTube channel themselves with hundreds and hundreds of videos and they have experience in shooting videos and creating content and they think they can come and tell me what's best for me. That is some really hilarious stuff. It really is. If you don't have a position, if, if you don't have experience in an area, if you don't know what you're talking about, then you have no authority to talk about it. Now, of course, as they say, everyone's entitled to an opinion. Opinions are like assholes, right? Everybody has one. You can have an opinion. It doesn't mean anything. But the next time you want to share your opinion with me, put it in a self-addressed and stamped envelope and put it in the mailbox. How about that? <laughs> the next time I want your opinion, I'll give it to you. <laughs> All right, I'm being a little cheeky here. This is this is stuff that, you know, the stuff that not not very much bothers me, but the stuff that does bother me is stuff that is related to bullyish behavior, bullying, uh trying to co you know, coercion and things like that. That bothers me. I don't get upset too often, but I will get upset when I see someone bullying someone else. And that is definitely what I see with uh, the whole Russell J. Gould uh, construct. With the way he treats people, the way his followers treat people, his followers imitate him, imitate his behavior. Because a leader is the reflection of his followers, and the followers are a reflection of the leader. There is no doubt about that. Okay? Just like the, the student is a reflection of the teacher, the teacher is a reflection of the student. I bear this in mind every single day when I open my mouth because I know that what I say reflects upon my tutor, colon Raven, as far as correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar goes. Now, I can share my own thoughts and perceptions and positions on other people, but I will never go into a mode of attack where I'm attacking someone's character or making it personal or name calling or anything like that. I will try my best never to participate with logical fallacies. And unfortunately, not too many people know what a logical fallacy is. If you want to learn about logical fallacies and how to use them, you can study a Donald Trump speech. You can study a Russell J. Gould video. He uses numerous logical fallacies in um, when, when he speaks. So a logical fallacy is basically, let's say, um, okay, here's an example. The most, the most 
well-known or most used logical fallacy is the ad hominem attack. And that just means that you're attacking the man. It's a Latin term. Where, say, say two people are having a debate about uh, whether the earth is flat or the earth is round. It's getting into a heated debate, right? And they're they're presenting their evidence. They're presenting what they think are you know the facts and this and that. And then and then all of a sudden one guy says, "Why would you believe this guy sitting right here? Look at this guy sitting right here. Look at him. He looks like a freaking slob. He probably lives in his parents' basement. He's probably an alcoholic. I doubt he even graduated high school. This guy." is a freaking idiot. What I just did there had nothing to do with whether the earth is flat or round. I attacked the other guy, the speaker. Do you see what I'm saying? That is what is known as ad hominem. When you call someone a moron or you say they're an idiot or blah, 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 you are using the ad hominem logical fallacy. Especially when you name call, which is the lowest hanging fruit of all. And when I see people name call like that, it tells me, a lot about that person's psychological condition of state. It really does. It tells me where their mind and, more importantly, where their heart is. That they would resort to such things. So keep that in mind when you're commenting on my channel. I just ask that you keep that stuff off there. I know most of you have no idea what the terms and conditions are of my comments field. Even though, when you go to comment, there is a pop-up box, usually, that says, please abide by the community guidelines, blah, blah, blah. And if you click on that, you will see terms and conditions that I personally wrote down. Those terms and conditions will pop up. And then you can educate yourself. You can cultivate your knowledge on the terms and conditions of the comments field. And that way you can be sure that you're not walking through my house with shit on your shoes. That you observe etiquette. That you read the contract before you agree to it, before you comment. That tells me, hmm, this person is intelligent. They're, they think before they speak. They research the domain before they enter it. They know what they're doing. They know where their towel is. By the way, that's a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy reference. I don't know if anybody would ever get that. Rest in peace, Douglas Adams. But it tells me, if you read the terms and conditions, it tells me that, oh, you're a contract reader. Man, you got a leg up on 99% of the other people on YouTube. Because they definitely don't read the contracts. They definitely don't read the terms and conditions. They're the type of people that will download Facebook. And then it says, you, gotta, you have to agree to our terms and conditions and our privacy policy. And they just scroll through the whole thing. They don't read it. And they just click the agree box. That's the type of people. That, that's the type, you know, most people are like that. They just click the agree box. They don't even read the shit. And that's most people commenting on the internet. Anyways, to bring it back to what I was talking about at the beginning. So if you come into my comments field and you violate the terms and conditions, that's just like trespassing. That is just like the trespasser in the middle of the night in the house the burglar that's breaking in. Now, it's not as, you know, the severe, severity is not, obviously not the same. But you're, it's basically the same principle. Whether that's through ignorance or whether that's because you're a jerk doesn't matter. Although, on my end, I just naturally guess that, well, hey, they probably didn't read the terms and conditions because most people don't think to do that. They don't care. They just don't. They weren't taught that type of consideration for the places that they're commenting in or walking into or whatever. They just weren't taught that. You don't know what you don't know, as a wise man once said. So I hope you found this a uh, little more personal podcast entertaining. If you liked it, if you liked my demeanor in this, which is different than most of the other podcasts I've done, let me know in the comments field and I will definitely do more quote-unquote opinionated podcasts because I don't mind doing it. It brings out more of my personality. You can get to know a little bit more about me and what I'm like as a regular dude. 
Thanks for listening. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like, and I'll do the same, and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.